it, I think lots of people have got different ideas of what the, the, uh, the loss of the tokens development system right. it is and what it means for Formula One. Just to sort of recap, the engine is broken up into different subsections and through the year you only get 32 tokens in which to change. So um, a cylinder head is two tokens, uh, a fuel rail is one token. So you spend your tokens on the different development areas that you want. And in the past few years, this has been quite restrictive to the teams to catch up to someone like Mercedes that did a really good job because big fundamental layout changes, big combustion changes, changes uses a lot of tokens. Scrapping this system can be good and bad. So now the team can make any number of changes they want to the power unit through the year, but they're restricted purely by having five, five race engines to last each driver through the year. So you've only got five opportunities to introduce changes. Now you could, in theory, introduce five completely different power unit specifications every time the driver got uh, an engine change. It's probably unlikely. Um, no one, I think, has that level of uh, resource and development. It's a very risky way of going racing, but teams can do it. So we would expect people like Honda and Renault to make big uh, layout changes, big structural changes to the engines in which to catch up to Mercedes. So that's the common understanding, but we have to remember equally that Mercedes now have carte blanche to change anything they want on that power unit. So whereas that power unit was absolutely right in 2014 and has dominated the sport in the three seasons since, um, it hasn't changed very much in that time. So maybe Mercedes have been thinking of some great ideas, have got lots of things that they could have changed that they felt wasn't worth the risk, wasn't worth the development tokens. So Mercedes or Ferrari could suddenly make a big change and step ahead of Renault, Honda or anybody else. So the token change will be difficult. And I think now that everyone's starting to close up and everyone's have to push much harder to get better performance out of these power units, reliability is starting to come in. Now this year, Lewis Hamilton had one blow up and it was like the world had ended. I think in 2017, we're gonna see a lot more blow ups for lots of drivers, maybe not at the level that we saw in 2014, but certainly they're gonna be pushing these power units much harder uh, in terms of developing them. And that will lead to parts being brought in that maybe aren't quite completely tested and we will see failures. So it's gonna be an interesting year. Understanding that the token system was there for cost reductions uh, to prevent someone coming in and doing exactly what they're allowed to now is change as much as they want whenever they want, if they have the budget. Um, it then fails to understand why they've reintroduced this rule uh, where there is no token system. You know, a manufacturer could literally just throw millions and millions and millions at their program and try and get results from that direction. I don't think it's necessarily good for the sport. The fans seem to like it, the manufacturers seem to like it. I know the engine specification freeze we had back in the V8 days was deeply unpopular by the engine manufacturers, but really did its job in containing casting man managing performance. I would have thought it'd be better now to maybe have one more year of a token system and then freeze the specification much tighter now, once they'd all got close together, rather than really opening up Pandora's box of development. So it kind of fails to uh, explain why this change has come about.